Hello and welcome to Palace Confidential, your weekly look at all things royal, brought to you from the mail. Lots to discuss this week, from reports of the Sussex's Netflix row, the Battle of the Royal Portraits, and we hear about a new book about our new Queen. Here to discuss all that and lots more is Andrew Pearce, consultant editor of the Daily Mail and Palace Confidential's favourite fantasy neighbour. Rebecca English, the paper's <laughs> royal editor and diary editor Richard Eden, your second favourite Richard. We'll also be looking at some of your comments and questions later on and including the latest on which of the Palace team you would rather live next to. Rebecca, let's kick things off with a quick word on a story that's been getting a lot of attention on social media today. A potential date for King Charles' coronation? Well, I'm going to start off this show with it being a total party pooper, I'm oh, afraid. Oh, good. That's what we uh, like. <laughs> let's yeah. start it on a high note, because yeah. I, I don't think it's true. It's been claimed by Bloomberg in the US that it's, it's uh, June the 3rd next year. And it definitely will be next spring. Well, it's definitely not going to happen on the 3rd, unless there's a, a total you know, disaster in planning. It's also the derby that day. Might even be the FA. It's the FA Cup, Cup final yeah, as well. I, mean, it's I just, never know about football. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, like, likewise, but yeah. I'm told it is. It's just, no. It's, so but I think it'll be, be I th well, I think it'll be fairly close. I mean, there's a lot of talk about June the 2nd. Um, so it'll be during the week and we'd have a bank holiday and, you know, we might even turn it into a kind of a big royal long weekend. I mean, I don't know. I'm Come just speculating. Come on, Your Majesty, you know we want another holiday. <laughs> well, if, it, if it's June the 2nd, that would be the anniversary yeah. of the Queen's coronation, yeah. wouldn't it? I yeah. Think? <laughs> but now, Rebecca, we also saw an early test for King Charles when the new Prime Minister... Liz Truss told him not to go to the COP27, the environmental forum. What, what do you make of that? So there's two schools of thought here. The first is that there was claim, the Sunday Times had the story that he wasn't going to go to COP27. They really overplayed this aspect of the king being told by Liz Truss he couldn't go. People I've spoken to are saying, well, look, it, it was mooted, it was discussed, he, he was penciled in to go. But like everything that was penciled in, uh, now he's king, things are different. We had a conversation, it was very amicable, and he's not going to go. He might give a video address or something like that. But obviously because he is now king when he goes abroad anything he does is now a state visit and you know there's a a kind of there's a big wish list that the government want him to to start on in places they want to go places they want to develop relationships so doing kind of going to kind of for, for a particular speech on a particular issue is not really on that agenda or mm. not the top of their list i wonder perhaps though if the new prince of wales will go instead that's a really uh, good point, actually. That would be interesting. Yeah. And yeah. Richard, there was an Australian minister apparently already complaining about it, saying, I'm going to get, I'm, I can do the accent. It's like, mm -hmm. he's our head of state too. Who are you to tell him not to go? What do you make of that? Well, exactly. I mean, that's the problem. Things are more complicated. The, the Prime Minister can't really tell um, the King what to do. Because, can she not? Well, well I mean, she, she can advise him, he can advise her. It, it's a complicated two-way relationship. But as so the Austra we're talking very euphemistically uh, now. As the Come on, there's got to be a balance of power in there somewhere. Well, yeah. maybe that comes with time. When it's yeah. the Queen who's been on the throne for as long as she had. No, but what, is the brings... what does the Constitution say? It, no, we don't, yeah. The Prime yeah. Minister would decide yeah, yeah, in yeah. the end, but yeah. there'd be a lot of conversations between the usual channels, as we call it. Mm. There'd be the, the Prime Minister's private secretary, the King's private secretary, yeah. uh, the Foreign Secretary's private secretary. They would all be involved in this. Uh, and I suspect, as Rachel says, pr the King was not surprised to be advised not to go, because I think so. he probably thought he shouldn't probably be going anyway. Yeah. Did you think the king might have also thought, oh, brilliant, I could put my feet up? No, I think oh, no, far from <laughs> no. That's the last thing. Yeah. I mean, his work ethic is yeah. as ferocious as it's ever been, and the environment is still on... Mm -hmm. On the, very high on his list of things that he wants to still uh, plug away at, but it's it's like everything they've just got to tweak it now and maybe recalibrate some of the plans yeah. they already had in place. So. I think we're going to see this time and time again because with the Queen we didn't know what her views were. She was happy to accept advice, whereas with King Charles we know exactly what his views are. And we know that yeah. one of his the things he's most passionate about is the environment, and he's been to previous summits. So it's inevitable people will ask. Is is he going? If not, why not? And it becomes a big story. Um, and so I think we will see this on lots of issues over time, and it does highlight the pitfalls that King Charles faces. Mm. And moving on, we also, Rebecca, saw a new portrait this week of the new Fab Four, as they're being dubbed. Can you tell us any more about that? 
Yeah, it was a really lovely portrait, actually, wasn't it? Taken by um, Chris Jackson from Getty, who's one of their favourite photographers. And uh, I saw a lot of comment on social media that it was it was taken uh, just before the reception that the King and the Queen Consort held on the Sunday after the Queen had died for um, visiting dignitaries. And, you know, some, I think, pretty, you know, pot stirrers saying oh, well, why are they all smiling at it? Because they're out there on duty. You yeah. know, that's what they do. You know, you've got personal grief and you have to put it one side to do your public duty. Um, but it's a very meaningful picture. Mm. It shows you this is the future of the monarchy. Uh, hopefully you'll like what you see. Um, and I like the fact it kind of marries, you know, the fact, the experience and the wisdom of the king and the queen consort with the kind of youth and enthusiasm of the prince and princess of Wales. Um, mm. To me, they look a good team. Look how close the, the queen Queen Consort is to the King, really close. Almost, they are a real. T <coughs> they are going to be a really good team. Now, teach the arms me. around the waist. The arms around the waist, exactly. Actually. Very affectionate. Yeah. You don't normally see that. They're definitely at ease together, and that shows. I mean, yeah. I think lots of people have said they would quite like to have seen William, you know, with his arm around his wife. It sort of lacks a bit of. I think she's um, got her arm. Round well, his, around oh my gosh, you really can overthink yeah. Yeah. a quick portrait, can't yeah. you? But speaking of portraits, a day later. Another royal portrait emerged. What can you tell us about that one, Rebecca? It did, and what was very curious about this, Harry and Meghan, uh, are two lovely pictures taken uh, of them by one of their great friends where they attended the Young One World Summit just before the Queen died. But therein begs the question, why suddenly release them now? They were taken a, a month ago. It's, it's puzzling, and I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I do. Yeah, I knew, I, 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 I know the answer. answer. I know what the answer. What do you make of the timing? Me, me, Pray me, tell. me, me. Don't forget us. We, are, we really matter. <laughs> We're really important. You, you don't matter very much anymore, actually. Well, you, we are talking about them, to yeah, be yeah, fair. But you, you've backed <laughs> away. You've walked away. Uh, and I actually thought the timing was pitiful. We have sorry had. No, that's fine. That's sorry fine. I don't, I don't sorry disagree. Yeah. What, what do you think of this picture? Um, I think it's a very striking picture, isn't it? I mean, it's, you know, it shows them relaxed, but look who's at the centre of attention. It's her. Yeah. It's, oh, the body language is I mean, you might remember that cover they did for, I think it was Time magazine, where again, Harry was sort of on the fringes. There was no doubt who the star was which has really turned things on, on its head because it should be the, the king's son who's the star, but it, in fact it, it's Meghan and she's making that clear, I, I think. I really like that well, outfit and she does look beautiful, can we I just should, say? She does, but yeah. I disagree with that the king's son should be the star. I actually think it should be more equal. I think mm. Harry looks like a bit part player. Is that yeah, equal actually, though? Yeah. No, I think it should be more yeah. Yeah. Kind of competition Harry looks like a bit, a bit part player. He looks player. sheepish, doesn't he? Doesn't he? <laughs> He's been a bit part player for weeks. I mean, she, does, he even, does she even mention him in the podcast, maybe fleet my husband. The speech was it in mm. Europe. He was sat in the in the audience hall while she was making the speech. Mm. Who are you, Harry? That's all right, isn't it? Yeah. She's she's her own woman. Yeah, it, it is reminiscent <laughs> of that time picture, which made me laugh. There were a lot of memes, but I don't know if you remember at the time, Joe, that he looked like the hairdresser standing behind <laughs> yeah, yes. her, That's going, right. "Oh, did you have a nice holiday? Yeah. What do you think of these I lengths and things that like one. that?" You must they were very sli funny. Slightly odd, just hanging on to sort of one finger, though, isn't mm. it? That's an unusual. It's quite, that, that is, it's quite a sweet. That's, that's quite something to pick on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just a, that's just an affectionate handhold. Yeah, are I, they, I'd, but I'd they're not holding hands really, are they? Just sort of clasping her little finger. But it's this finger. Okay. I don't know. I don't, you, <laughs> I'm going to leave the expert analysis to that one. Now, a reminder that you can now find out a little bit more about some of the royal outfits that we talk about here and some of the things that the panel are wearing as well in the description below. So let's turn to some of our comments now. The first follows a comment you made last week, I think, Richard, where Mortimer Brewster says, we keep hearing about how much the ceremonies cost, but they bring in a lot of money as well. If they presented it in that way and showed that it could be a net gain, then they could do it. Without the ceremony, what is the point of the monarchy? I suspect this is in, we were talking about the Prince and Princess of Wales having an investiture. Exactly, yeah. Do those ceremonies bring in money? Yeah, I mean, it's always hard to quantify, but certainly any event like a royal wedding, or in this case, it would be, you know, perhaps a big investiture at Carnarvon Castle, like um, then Prince Charles's was, it is a big event. And it could be a, a showcase to show Wales to the world. I, I would have thought it could be terrific for tourism, yeah. Mm. Okay, well, on the subject of whether Archie and Lilibet 
will get those titles. Nicolette says, why should children in the US, at least one US citizen, get British titles? It's absurd. We don't have titles in the US. They should not even be used for Harry and Meghan because they are living here now. The children will be ridiculed if they go to any public or private school. It's actually sickening. I'm half British and like the monarchy, but not for permanent residents of the US. I never really understand this kind of thing. Well, we're just our own people. We want to do our own thing, but we still want the best bits yeah, yeah. of what the royal family has. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I suppose it kind of harkens back to the whole kind of king and queen consort debate we were having, which seems so long ago now. Yeah. And someone once said then to me the reason why the king was so keen for Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, to be queen consort is that she was his wife and that's yeah. what she should be and therefore she should be entitled to it. Uh, and it seemed kind of disrespectful not to be. I suppose you could apply that same argument to Harry and Meghan, but, you know, it's very different goalposts now. Yeah, so. It so it's just getting more and more like Game of Thrones these days. Yeah. But look, continuing our discussion of which member of Palace Confidential would make the best neighbour, well, Ethel Carson, bless you, has voted for me. I've got one vote. One. <laughs> well done, Jay. She writes, big time Palace Confidential fan. Thank you, Ethel. Love all your episodes and appreciate the beautiful photo mon montages of the late Queen. Stick around to the end for a new montage today. Why did Princess Anne wear military dress to the funeral? Also, I would love to be Joe's neighbour. I'll bring the popcorn and we can watch The Crown and Palace Confidential. <laughs> You'd be the neighbour yeah. passing the rosé over the fence, wouldn't uh, you? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, e exactly. More, more, of a, more of a Sauvignon Blanc girl, she, but she yes. Might, she <laughs> might not share very much. But, uh, <laughs> how rude. How rude. Uh, Rebecca, can you answer the question about Anne? Why did she wear military dress to the funeral? Well, it was a state funeral, so and they were yeah. one of the Queen's children. And more importantly, it was the Queen's wish. And actually, I thought she looked absolutely magnificent. Um, and I thought a lot of commentary about that as well. She she owned that outfit, I thought. Mm. And was... she has that right as an honorary. Exactly. Colonel. Yeah, yeah. She's got she's got the military honours, that means she can. Um, but also, as I say, she looked. You know, it was a state funeral. She's the Queen's child. They were all doing it. Um, obviously, Andrew was a slightly moot point and uh, and didn't and was only allowed for part of it but I think that was a discussion a few weeks ago we had um, yes and uh, and she's tipped as well I have to say to get more military honours in the funeral in the future so I think watch your space on that very interesting good question Ethel please do keep those comments coming in you can leave a comment below or contact us on social media where we are at mail plus or send us an email at palace at mail plus .co .uk. we'll be answering more of your questions at the end of the show We'll return to the Sussexes and reports of a disagreement with Netflix in a few moments, so stick with us for that. But in the meantime, let's turn to a new book written by Angela Levin. It's a biography of the new Queen concept and has some fascinating insight into Camilla's journey so far. Angela told us what she discovered while putting it together. I've actually wanted to write a biography of Camilla since 2015. I spent about three months with her then, writing for Newsweek magazine, and I was astonished how amazing she was, so I started work. Prince William was very wary of Camilla. Uh, he adored his mother, he didn't want somebody stepping in in her shoes. I think he was helped there a lot by his wife Catherine because she comes from a very stable family and a very loving family and if there was any arguments they worked hard to get over them. And slowly she's made her mark with him too. One, because she's made their father very happy, more relaxed. Um, he's got much more in common now with Charles and um, she makes everybody laugh. And when the grandchildren started coming, she didn't try and take over or suggest things. She's got her own, she's got her own children. But the little ones have taken to her, they find her she's okay, she doesn't interfere um, and they've got on very well now. Catherine often goes off with Charles and Camilla to see art things. There's a great sort of, there's a friendship there, there's a warmth there and apparently Catherine was very grateful for what Camilla showed her and told her about before she got married. Camilla was always very um, friendly to William and Harry um, she cared for them and she um, tried not to push herself too forward. She's always trodden very, very carefully. Um, we heard when, we, when we, they got married, Prince Harry said, you know, we love her to bits, but that obviously hasn't lasted through the years. And she tried very hard with Meghan 
to please her. She'd done this with Catherine because she'd had such a terrible time when she joined the royal family. She tried to tell them where the um, holes could be and the uh, protocols that sound ridiculous but they need to follow and to give them an understanding of a very different life. Uh, Catherine was very grateful. I'm told that Meghan wasn't interested, really. The Queen had liked Camilla very much when she was married to Andrew Parker Bowles, and they were very happy with her. But once she started going out with Prince Charles again, she refused to have anything to do with her. And eventually, she and Prince Philip realised that this is the one thing that Charles has put his foot down on, and she's just not going to... Um, leave her for someone else. But over time, they noticed that Camilla never complained. She never answered back. She was doing tremendous dutiful work for, the, for all the charities that she could. And she was being um, very helpful and supportive of Prince Charles, who changed his demeanour enormously. He looked happy, he looked relaxed, he could rely on her. He'd had a, quite a hard time and he just felt that here was someone who was there for him. And that's how it's been ever since. If you look, you notice that she walks one step behind him. This is not because she feels inferior. This is what she feels is her duty. But on her own, she's very forceful and strong. She's also very, very keen on literacy. And she goes around the country talking to families who've had a very hard time and trying to encourage them to get their children to read. Now that um, Camilla is known as Queen Consort, obviously a lot is going to change in her life. She won't be looking through the red box, which the Queen always does, uh, did every day. She won't make big decisions. She won't tell him how to do things, but she will be there to support him. Um, it's a very hard job to do, and she will be there to do that. Angela Levin's book, Camilla, is out now, published by Simon & Schuster. If you want to buy it, you can click the link below. And you'll also be able to find a longer version of that interview on this channel later this weekend. Now, Rebecca, we know that you and our new queen are BFFs forever. You're such a wind-up version. <laughs> oh, on a, come on. It's like if you're looking for Camilla, just look for Rebecca generally, if she's here. But what do you think we can expect from her new role in all seriousness? Um, yeah, wind up aside. I think a bit of the old and a bit of the new. Like I, so I was with the King and the Queen Consort in Edinburgh on um, Monday. And it's the first time I've seen See? them. You're always with them. <laughs> yeah. um, it's the first time I've seen them since they came back to Buckingham Palace the day after the Queen died. And I have to say, I think I said at the time, like, she looked broken, like really grief-stricken and obviously not quite sure of the reception she was going to get. And so when she came up, there's all these kind of new layers that even I haven't seen before. Um, new security, new levels of officialdom. But she saw me and a few others standing outside and got a little, oh, hello, love to see you. know. So I thought, oh, you know, I don't think things are going to change too much. Um, and certainly the way I've been told it is issues that she's been very passionate about, such as um, literacy, domestic violence, sexual violence against women. She's going to continue to move forward with those. But I think they'll have to tweak the way she conducts engagements because there's new responsibilities and she has you know new parameters in her job but I think a lot of the old will be there but also there are changes coming in I had a uh, an exclusive in the mail on Saturday that she was going to um, do away with the centuries old tradition of having ladies in waiting yeah. and uh, that's not out of disrespect to anyone it's um, simply I think she just thinks there's there's more different ways to do it nowadays so she has a brilliant team of female staff who collect the flowers when they're on engagements um, she'll probably get some more correspondence people in and when she goes on these big away days to other parts of the country she'll get friends to help out but there's just it's not really in tune with the whole slim down monarchy you know that they want to present so mm. I think she, there are certain things she will do different differently but still incorporating the best of the Queen over the mm. last 70 years. Andrew, I, I think a lot about Camilla when I think it just really blows my mind. She's navigated 
you know, at, at times a hostile family, a yeah. hostile establishment. She's been a bit of a pariah publicly. She's, she's done pretty well, hasn't she, all in all? Astonishing, actually. Yeah. And uh, she's learned well, I don't know who from, but she's the ext most extraordinary diplomat. She has not really put a step wrong. When you consider she was just beginning to emerge into public life on the arm of Prince Charles when Princess Diana was killed in the car crash, she then vanished from public view altogether for a year or so and it's been gradually managed and you still wouldn't have thought 20, 15 years ago it was conceivable that she would be Queen, Queen Consort. And when she married Charles, uh, I was on the Times then, Rebecca was doing the same job here, we, we were told it is intended that she would be known as Princess Consort. And we all got into trouble because we said, yeah, but she will be Queen Consort, of course she will. And it caused a big row with the palace because it is intended that meant it could be unintended that. Because yes. even then, Charles wanted his wife to be his queen. And actually, it's almost, I think you'd probably have to change the law of the land for the Prince of Wales when he becomes king, for his wife not to become queen or queen consort. And I suspect after the coronation, I suspect she'll be anointed, just like uh, the Queen Mother was, uh, the, a coronation of George the Sixth, and she'll just be known as Queen. I was going to say, do you think we would just sort of like gradually just keep forgetting to add that? It'll, it'll change in the court circular, yeah. I think. Well, so it's, it'll be yeah, it's the palace that we're just following. What's been set by the palace? They keep referring to her as the Queen Consort, which I must admit annoys me really because she's Queen Camilla. Mm. You know, she she is the Queen. I mean, we. The Queen Consort is the same role that the Queen Mother f fulfilled, she was, or Queen Mary. They were never referred to as the Queen Consort, but it was I, just Queen Elizabeth. I, I would bet a fair sum of money that 25 years ago you would have been up in arms at the idea of Queen Camilla. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Well, there, possibly, there was hatred yeah. of her, yeah. because people blamed her for the death of the, yeah. din the dynasty-style, Hollywood-style beautiful young princess Diana. Diana was 36 when she died. She died, she was, it, was, it was a tragedy. The marriage was a disaster and it takes two sides to break mm. up marriages. We all know that. Mm. But Camilla was the wicked witch mm. and she knew it. Uh, and in private, she would make jokes about being the wicked witch. Uh, but she, she stuck at it because she loves him and he loves her. And I think it's an extraordinary testament to their love actually that they're there now together. And Rebecca knows this better than anyone. He's pretty scratchy if she's not around, isn't he? He's definitely a different person. Right? She, she knows how to handle him, yeah. you know. Um, and, I mean, she, they've been together, they've been married 17 years. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I think people forget that. She, she's been, I think she's been with him longer than she hasn't been with him in her entire life, you know. And, and they are, and they're good together. They're a, they're a good team together. And on the whole kind of Queen Consort thing, I think, I mean, look, every, every, woman who's married to a king is a queen consort mm. but you know queen queen elizabeth the queen mother was a queen consort but everyone just called her queen elizabeth mm. and i think that will happen with camilla yeah. but i just think it feels a bit raw to us at the moment you know that we've just lost the only queen yeah, if someone mentions that the most queen of us everyone's going to think about known. elizabeth II. exactly yeah. and i think she's very conscious of that yeah. as well because she was her mother-in-law and she really loved yeah, her yeah. as well as admired her so i think just for us that will take a while to get used to but <laughs> Yeah. It'll happen at some point. Well, let's have a quick word about the Sussex story that was in the news now. Richard, their new Netflix show has hit another bump. What can, what can you tell us? Yeah, this is that show that we've um, talked quite a bit about. It's the, <laughs> oh, it's the, the docu-series? <laughs> is that yeah. what it's called? We, we like to call yeah. it a reality show, like the Kardashians, but they say, no, it's much more serious. It's Absolutely, a It's yes. a docu-series. Yes. And the latest is from um, the New York Post reported that there's a real problem there, that um, since the death of the Queen and the funeral and everything, they've been getting cold feet about the whole project. And apparently Netflix are very happy with this. It's all been recorded. They've been filming it for a year with a very um, celebrated director. Um, and the production team are happy with it. But um, Harry and Meghan are not, according to this report. And they want changes. I think they want stuff to be dropped. Mm. But now there's a bit of a standoff. This is all what the New York Post is claiming, and I don't have inside information on it. But um, it, it was meant to be coming out quite soon. Yeah. So, um, you know, watch this space. Rebecca, it shouldn't be a surprise to them, should it, that Netflix will want some juicy content in there? No, and, and I think I said last week when we were discussing the book, uh, this is something that particularly Harry, because this is his 
blood family, um, should have thought about when they were making all these lucrative deals, that, you know, these deals would come to fruition at a time when his grandparents were very elderly and, and could go at any time, and that would change the whole dynamic of the family. But it makes me wonder, what, what's in there that they've so now desperately worried about coming out? Also, think about this. If they're now desperate to, to change these things and water them down, what they were happy for them to come yeah, out in this form saying. when the Queen yeah. was alive. Yeah. What really upset a 96-year-old lady, the, his grandmother. So now because she's dead, oh, we're going to pull it, are we? Because it's going to damage us. That's what they worry. This is what they're worrying about. Well, this it's going to damage the them because well of the great them. outpouring no. of love and affection for the Queen worldwide. The biggest TV audience worldwide, wasn't it, for anything, four billion? And they now realise, those pair of idiots, that actually this whole thing has been miscast because actually it will backfire against them horribly. But the idea that they thought it was OK to do it mm. while the Queen was alive makes me lose even more respect for so just to um, um, sort of strike a slightly cynical note so um, isn't it possible they sure kind of not. they kind of <laughs> welcome these reports because then it suggests they can slightly disown themselves from it they can sort of say oh we actually didn't want that to be in but netflix or the producers insisted you know it's their way of getting an apology in almost before it's broadcast some twisting I mean you know because it's still their content that they've yeah. surely had yeah. some oversight over anyway but if you were their, their lucky fly, publicist their at the fly moment, on the wall yeah Andrew what would you be advising them uh, try and pull out of it all together it's not gonna happen though is well it? then they're in, then they're in big trouble mm. and I think they are in big trouble and I think they're in trouble on the book as well because um, we know that publishers and broadcasters want they don't want nice anodyne stuff about how wonderful Prince Charles is with his love of nature and how lovely Camilla is as she is supportive. We know what they want to revisit the whole thing about Diana. Mm. That's all been talked about. Uh, and when that, all of that's been put to bed here, largely, I would say. Uh, and so, um, and that's why they got millions and millions of pounds because that's why, mm. th why else would they have got millions and millions of pounds? Because they were going to put the boot in. They want the family drama. They that's do want the family drama. The most famous family in the world. Oh, and here was a unique insight from the inside the family. OK, well, let's move on. That was a fascinating one for us to keep talking about, I'm sure. But there's just time now to answer a couple of your questions. Laurie Cornell asks, I thought royals were not allowed to do selfies for security reasons. Rebecca, what can you tell us about this? This is one of these kind of other kind of protocol misnomers. It is more that people took their lead from the Queen because she really hated the whole mobile phone mm. Uh, genre that we see. She hated getting out of the car and seeing a sea of mobile phones and she wanted to see faces and talk to people and, and shake hands. So people tended to take her lead from there but of course they have to move with the times and the selfie culture is where it is. I mean there are pitfalls. There was a story we had recently about someone posing for a selfie and it turns out the person they were posing with, you know, wasn't of the quite kind of background that they would have necessarily felt comfortable with. So there is a downside but I think they're trying to be relatable to people. People. So, I, 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 I mean, I've even seen, I haven't seen the King do it, I've seen Queen Consort do it, and I've obviously seen the Prince and Princess of Wales do it. I don't think we'll ever necessarily see the King doing a selfie in the way that we Felt know cute, it. Felt cute, might delete later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, you know, I think as long as it's, it's done in a, in a limited way. Do you know um, what Rebecca says about the mobile phones? Because I remember when she went to the BBC, she was completely shocked at all these BBC journalists and producers um, when she arrived, all had their mobile phones yeah. up, and, and, and she was completely taken aback by it, making the point, well, at the BBC, there must be enough photographs and images of me here. Why do they want their own? And she was quite taken aback by it. Hmm. Well, let's move on. Let's hear what Naomi, oh, I'm so sorry, no, Naomania asks, I'd like to hear the panel's thoughts on Queen Margaret's decisions to strip the titles from her grandchildren. Is this something the panel think King Charles will emulate? I do hope so, she says. They then suggest that only the Prince and Princess of Wales children get titles and then only Prince George's kids. Andrew, Richard, anyone yeah. want to take the floor? Well, this is very interesting. This is Queen Margaret of Denmark, who has publicly said that her younger son, Joachim, um, cannot have titles for his children. 
and it went down extremely badly. Um, that, that Prince spoke out about it. He said because that, wasn't it a bit of a bombshell for the actual family as well? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. He, he said that even his son had been bullied at school as a result. You know, now he was the, the pupil formerly known as Prince. Oh, wow. Um, and he was getting a hard time. So then she actually had to put a statement on her royal website apologising for the way it was done. Not for doing it, but apologising for the way it's done. But I think she has set a good example, which I personally hope that that Charles will follow and um, you know she uh, follow in terms of saying that to the second son in in our case Harry what do you think Andrew I absolutely don't think they need Prince and Princess and uh, they could be just like Anne and Mark sorry Princess Anne's kids Zara and Peter they've done mm. pretty well haven't they both of them well. Mr and Miss Phillips or Mrs Tin Miss, Miss, Mrs Tinder Tind what's Tindall. it called? Tindall thank you uh, um, but I suspect there'll be a bit of pushback from Harry and Meghan there's quite interesting parallels because yeah. Uh, look, I'm not an expert on the Danish royal family at all, but I think the family concerned live in Paris. They don't undertake royal duties. Mm. It's not like she said you can't have any royal association. She's offered them other titles. Yeah. Um, but they're not very happy about it. And they, there seems to be quite you know, strong parallels with the situation we've seen in the yeah. UK as well. Being prince and princess still matters, apparently. Mm. People used to call me a princess when I was younger. I can't you know. believe that. <laughs> I don't want to be a princess. Did late? you want to be a princess? <laughs> yeah. Too late. Finally, Kat asks, will we have Valentine Lowe as a special to talk about his book? Well, Kat, you're not the only person to ask, and our people have been speaking to his people, and I'm very pleased to say that I'm due to sit down with Valentine Lowe very soon. Come back to the channel on Monday to see that. So do please keep those questions coming in. We love them, and a reminder that you can leave them below. Contact on social media where we are at Mail Plus, or send us an email Email at palace at mailplus.co.uk. Now, stick to the end of the show as we'll be showing a little montage we've called The House of Twinsor. See what we did there when the Duchess of Sussex's style echoed that of the late Duchess of Windsor. Before then, there is just time to thank my guests, Rebecca English, Andrew Pierce, Angela Levin, and Richard Eden. And to you, thank you for watching. See you Monday. Bye bye. <laughs>